Today is Tuesday, March the 28th. You guys should be reading Galatians chapter 5. Again, this is a continuation of what Paul is talking about to this church scattered about the province of Asia, or Galatia, that had this issue of Jewish Christians coming and saying, you had to convert back to Judaism before you're allowed to be uh, a Christian, and you have to follow all these principles of the Old Testament. And Paul's saying, no, 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 no. Don't be led astray by this. And what I love in chapter 5, and there's two things that popped out to me, is the first one is in verse 1. It says it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. This is Paul's whole point. Don't subjugate yourself to the law again because the law is like a magnifying glass. It just pointed out the problems of your life and that you needed God to intervene in your mess. But we are set free from the law because Jesus paid the price. Don't subjugate yourself to the law again. Be made free in Jesus. That's why Jesus has come. So stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. Slavery to sin. Slavery to the Old Testament covenant. We are in a new covenant with Jesus. He has set us free. He says the entire law is summed up in this one thing. It's actually the same thing that Jesus said in the Gospels. It's summed up in this. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you want to keep the entire Old Testament, you can summarize it into one law. Love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said you can summarize it by love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. If you can love God and love people, then you don't need all the Old, Old Testament things. The Old Testament laws are in place because we don't love God and we don't love people well. And so I love that he points out these things and he ends, the third thing I guess I forgot to talk about, third thing is he talks about contrasting fruit. That you are under a new kingship and when you belong to Jesus, the fruits, the labors of your life should look different than the world around you. And he plays compare and contrast. So in verse 19, he talks about what the, the fruit of the flesh look like, the things of this world look like. And then starting in verse 22, he talks about, on the contrary, this is what God's people should look like. And they're in stark contrast to each other because they're two different kingdoms. And so when we read through this, we need to be thinking through, what does my life look like? Am I, if I belong to Jesus, does my life actually look like the fruit I'm supposed to be living in and I'm supposed to be having by the Spirit? And if it doesn't, then maybe I need to correct some things with Jesus' help and His Spirit to look more like Jesus. Maybe I need to surrender some things I didn't know I hadn't surrendered. Or maybe, maybe you read through this and you realize some things that you held back from God because you didn't want to surrender them. Jesus is saying it's not how it works. I get all or nothing. We have to surrender some things. What do we learn about Jesus from this passage? That God came to set us free. Free from our sin. Free for eternity. And that's an awesome thing. Jesus longs for us to spend eternity with him, to be set free, to become the creations that he has longed for us to be since the very beginning of time. What we learn about people is that we easily go back to the things that we're comfortable with, right? Even if those things are not always the best things for us, we go back to sin. We go back to stuff because those are what we know. And God wants to redeem us out of that to change us. So you and I have to watch this as people. We have to learn this from the scripture that, hey, I have to watch myself. Am I reverting back to something that I don't want to be anymore? Or am I pushing forward? It's uncomfortable, but am I pushing forward into the newness that God wants me to be? And the next step I can take is spending some time Comparing and contrasting the two types of fruit, the fruit of this world and the fruit of the Spirit. And see, what am I producing? And if I'm producing the fruit of this world, then I need to have a come to Jesus moment. And maybe you need to talk to someone about this. Hey, I thought I was living for Jesus, but I'm really holding on to the ways of this world more than I should be. We would love to partner with you. You can't do this all by yourself. You need the Spirit of God at work in you. You need other believers around you to hold you accountable, to walk these next steps with you. Maybe that is your next step to take. Or you also can be working through, hey, what are some of the fruit of the Spirit that I have? And what are some other ones I struggle with that I can learn to do better in? What about you? What are some things that stood out to you from this text? What, what are some things that you, your takeaways, key points, or maybe some questions you have? Leave it in the comments. Let's talk about this. Let's dialogue about God's word together and take next steps in following Jesus. Friends, let's read, if you haven't done so already, Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. 
Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Mark my words, I, Paul, tell you that if you were let that if you let yourselves be circumcised, Christ will be no of no value to you at all. Again, I declare to every man who lets himself be circumcised that he is obligated to obey the whole law. You who are trying to be justified by the law, you have been alienated from Christ. You have fallen away from grace. For though the Spirit we eagerly await by faith in the righteousness for which we have hope. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. You are running a good race. Who cut in on you to keep you from obeying the truth? That kind of persuasion does not come from the one who calls you. A little yeast works through the whole batch of dough. I am confident in the Lord that you will take no other view. The one who is throwing you into confusion, whoever that may be, will have to pay the penalty. Brothers and sisters, if I am still, if I am still preaching circumcision, why am I being persecuted? In that case, the offense of the cross has been abolished. For those ag- agitators, I wish they would go the whole way and emasculate themselves. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious. These are the fruit I was talking about. Sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Jesus, to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. Let's pray. Father God, may we live out this passage well. May we follow you all the way to heaven well. May we live just like Paul says, that we serve one another humbly in love, and that we love our neighbor as ourselves. Help us to put these words into practice today. Amen. Church, until we see each other tomorrow, you are sent. Have a great day.